Hello students, in this video we'll prove the Arzella-Ascoli theorem. The Arzella-Ascoli theorem states that if Fn is a pointwise bounded equicontinuous family In other words, I have a sequence, of course, Fn, n goes from 1 to infinity. I have a pointwise bounded equicontinuous family. Then Fn has a uniformly convergent subsequence. And I'm going to assume these Fn's are defined here. The important assumption is that Fn are going to map AB, a compact set, into R. Okay? So that's a very important assumption of the Arzella Scoli theorem is that this set over here has to be a compact set. So I have a compact set over here. And in other words, the Arzella Scoli theorem works for more general for more general metric spaces over a compact set. So this theorem actually generalizes quite a good deal. I'm just going to prove it on R though. Okay? All right, so how do we do this? So what I'm going to do, proof, consider R, which is the interval A, B, intersect Q, okay? These are all the rational numbers on the interval A, B, okay? This is countable and dense. Both those are important, countable and dense, okay? And so I'm going to write this R as just R1, R2, R3, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's countable and dense. And so now I'm going to use the pointwise boundedness. Now here's the, here's the scheme we're going to use. We know that F1, F1 of R1 is, F, oh, excuse me, Fn of R1 is bounded. And therefore, there exists a convergent subsequence of the sequence Fn of R1. There exists a convergent subsequence. I'm going to call it convergent sequence F1n of R1. So that subsequence of the original sequence F1n of R1 is going to converge. Now, this subsequence F1n R1. We know from this, this implies that F1, and that's a subsequence from my original sequence, of R2 is bounded. So from my first subsequence, I'll extract the second subsequence. That implies that there exists a convergent subsequence. F2n of R2 which converges. So in other words, this sequence F2n of R2 is a, is a subsequence of F1n, and this F1n is a subsequence of my original sequence. And we can play this game again. This F2n is bounded on R3, so I can find an F3n, an F4n, an F5n, an F6n, and so this process can continue. So this process continues to form a subsequence f K, N. And on this sequence FKN, I know that RK is going to converge at this sequence over here. And furthermore, not only will F of FKN of RK converge, FKN minus 1, FK, FKN RK minus 1, all the way down to R1 will all converge on this. So that tells me, so by considering, so I'm going to set GK of X to be F. K, K of X, and then I know that G, K of R, I, for any I, will converge. G, K of R, I will converge as K goes to infinity for any I. Okay? And this G, K, this diagonal of this array of subsequences is certainly a subsequence of my original sequence. So this GK is a subsequence, and I claim this GK is the subsequence that we want. So that's our claim. So I have my candidate, and so now we're going to work with this candidate. So now let's let epsilon be greater than zero. 
and pick Delta. Such that was. Such that this GK, GK of X minus GK of Y is less than epsilon over three if X minus Y is less than delta. Okay? I can do this because the GK is a subsequence of an equicontinuous family, so a subset of an equicontinuous family is also equicontinuous, trivially. Okay? So I can do this by the equicontinuity. The equicontinuity allows me to do this fact over here. And now I know that um, what I can also do is, since this delta is now specified, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down that AB is contained in the union J goes from 1 to infinity of these numbers RJ minus delta to rj plus delta, okay? Clearly, because I have a dense subset, so if I put down these intervals over here, I will cover that set. Now, by compactness, what can we say? That's the important part. We haven't used compactness yet. By compactness, there's a finite subcover, okay? That tells me that a, b is contained in maybe, say, r1 tilde, r1 tilde minus delta to r1 tilde plus delta, all the way up to some number r m tilde minus delta to r m tilde plus delta. There I'm using the fact that every open cover of a compact set has a finite subcover. That's, that's where we're using compactness. So I've used equicontinuity, I've used compactness. Good. And so now I know that G converges at all of these points over here, right? So since there's only a finite number of them, what can we do? There exists an n and n such that if n and m are bigger than or equal to that number n capital, then g n of r i tilde minus g m of r i tilde is less than epsilon over 3 for all r i, for every r i tilde, okay? Now I know that I know that for a particular one, for example, I know that for like R1 I can make this happen. I know for R2 I can make this for R1 till I can make this happen. For R2 till I can make this happen. For R3 till the for R M till I can make this happen. Since there's only a finite number of them, I'll just take whatever the minimum of those n's are for each of those corresponding R1 tildes, and that's gonna be my n capital over here. Now, what can we also say? For any x over in the set, so for every x, so if x is in A B. Then there exists, exists, let's call it R, um, let's call it Rx tilde. Let's just call it R, um, R tilde. And that's one of the R, R1 tilde, all the way up to Rm tilde. Such that X minus R tilde is less than delta. Okay? Excellent. And so I'd like to show that my sequence gn converges for any x, right? So now I know that this x minus r tilde is less than delta, so we're going to be over one of these sets over here. And now I'm going to estimate. So what we're going to do now is we're going to assume that m and n are bigger than or equal to n. I'm going to assume that x, I'd like to show that gn of x minus gm of x is less than epsilon. So how are we going to do that over here? So let's do it. Here's the last step. So let's estimate, so we're in this regime over here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say, let's look at gn of x minus gm of x for that x and a, b. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to fill in a couple different things. We're going to fill in gn x plus minus gn of the r tilde plus minus gm of the r tilde, and of course minus gm of x, okay? So I add in those three things, that doesn't change my absolute value over here, and now what can I say? So I'm gonna break this up into three parts over here, so this is less than or equal to. I'm gonna look at gn of x, gn of x, minus this gn of r tilde, Okay. 
Then we look at the gn of r tilde minus g, that's not a g tilde, it's just going to be a g n of r tilde minus gm of r tilde. And finally, I'm going to look at what? Finally, we'll look at gm of r tilde, gm of r tilde minus gm of x. Okay? So what are each of these things less than? Well, now what can I say? I can say that this is less than what? Well, I have gn of x minus gn of r tilde. I know that x minus r tilde is less than delta. So since x minus r tilde is less than delta, I can use the what? I can use the absolute continuity, the equicontinuity to say that these first terms are less than epsilon over 3 by the equicontinuity. Now these terms over here, this gn of r tilde minus gm of r tilde are what? Those can be made, those are all of them are less than or equal to epsilon over 3 by the assumption of the ri tildes, right? So no, those guys are less than epsilon over 3 over there, okay? Good? All right, and then finally, what about these things over here? Again, we're close, x and x, t x, uh, x, and, x and r tilde are less than, are within delta of each other, so that's less than epsilon over 3. So this whole term is less than epsilon, and that shows what? That shows that if n and m are bigger than or equal to n, and x is just any point in the interval a, b, that gn of x minus gm of x is less than epsilon, so that shows that this, that shows that this gn subsequence converges uniformly, but it's uniformly Cauchy, therefore it converges uniformly, so I found a uniformly convergent subsequence of my original sequence, and that proves our Zell Thank you very much.